So it's four of us here tonight. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, so Paul Hankins, um, who has was with us for a while ago, um, has returned. And Shane, um, who is in, it is now Thursday where you are. You're in Australia, correct? Yes. Yep, that's correct. So, um, Paul, uh, introduce yourself to Paul Hankins. Do you want me to in introduce? No, I, okay. I said I, I just said something weird. Shane, please introduce yourself to Paul. <laughs> okay, cool. That makes more sense. Um, okay. G'day, I'm uh, Shane. I'm a primary school teacher from Australia, um, and I've been delving into how I might be able to use AI to um, assist um, analyzing student writing to uh, to help them improve it and possibly identify if there's underlying issues. Uh, for those students in their writing. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Have what about you, made you any... Paul? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Introduce yourself to Shane, Paul. Oh, sure. I'm I'm Paul Hankins, and actually, Shane, uh, I'm bringing a student group. I, I, I'm not bringing them. I'm a chaperone. Uh, we're coming in two years to Australia oh, from cool. Indiana. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're really excited about the process. We're going to Greece next March. Uh, but the March after that, we're coming to it to Australia. Oh wow! Uh, the the flight alone looks the flight alone looks to be at least like twenty four hours. Yes, it's, it's goofy. It's up to it, down. Mm -hmm. uh, I teach um, I teach seniors in Southern Indiana, uh, so I teach um, AP Lit and composition, uh, public speaking, and interpersonal communications. Cool. So Shane, what's on your mind? Uh, so I suppose for me, I'm I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the volume, trying to keep up with the volume of change, with like the mm. upgrade to Omni, and what does that now mean for previous tests I've done, and then um, the announcement by um, Apple about the it integrating. And it just just feels like I need to take three months off just to try and catch up with where everything's at right now to try and learn all of this. just so much, and it's it's quite overwhelming to be frank. But what about everyone else? How, how's everyone else well, feeling at the moment? Uh, Shane, are you uh, are are your colleagues in, in at, on on site feeling the same way? Are you able to? Uh, are you? Is it just unique in terms of your perspective or appetite for this stuff that you're noticing all this? The things you just described are very understandable. I think all of us feel some of that. Are you finding yeah. any colleagues in a similar position? Well, part of the challenge I have is that I'm sort of on my own journey, that I, this is not with, because my department is not on board, the education department in Queensland is not on board with with this mm. at the moment their, their reaction when they first when it first came out so last year was to ban it and now they have said well it's not completely banned but they haven't really said well what does that look like and uh, there's 10 schools across all of queensland that are trialing it but other than that it's when no one's allowed to touch anything so be, because i'm trying to be a part of figuring out what this looks like then i'm sort of doing that on on my own to a degree so i'm reaching out through some colleagues um nationally in, in other states who are on this journey but um uh yeah that it's i suppose it's a bit isolating um at, at the moment to be thinking about it and then also that if i want to do anything all the levels of approvals required to get there as paul knows i've started down that pathway how's that going um, uh it's hit a bit of a hit a bit of a block at the moment because we've got an acting principal who finishes up at the end of this term so they're reluctant to keep going forward because they're not going to be the principal next term so then it's the idea is to wait till the net the the principal comes back at the start of next term which is mm. a big thing yeah and it has to be approved by them before you can go to the tech folks yep <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's it's just just a bit um bit it, and I suppose it's a bit hard to know. Well, then what what do I look at or out of all of this? Where do I try and focus my bit of attention outside of my day to day? 
where do, where do you put your time? Yeah. So um, I, I just put on the table an article from Sydney, um, University of Sydney, I think. If you can click on that, do you see it? Or I can share a screen. Uh, is that the one that... Just double yeah, click yeah. on it to open it up. Yeah. Just click one time, I think. Yeah. Does everyone see that? Hey, here it is. Yep. How generative AI can make personalized feedback at scale more consistent and efficient. Yeah. So it's a very short article. Does that, uh, David and Paul, do you see it as well? Or should I share uh, it? I, yeah. Could you share it? That'd be great. Aditya, nice Hello. to see you. Hey. How are Good you? to see you again, Aditya. Good to see you, too. Aditya. Aditya, introduce yourself to Paul Hankins, who's uh, from Indiana. My name's Aditya. I am, well, I guess I was a student at William Inn in middle school, but I graduated, <laughs> so I'm going to uh, Ridge <laughs> High School. Thank you. I'm going to Ridge High School. I'm a rising ninth grader. Um, and I just started my summer, like, three, my summer vacation a few days ago. That's great. Aditya, are you a part of the Youth Voices group with Paul? Um, um, yes. So I do do much. some stuff on Now Comment and um, Writing Partners. Uh, most recently, um, Mr. Allison and I created a uh, group for uh, debate. Cool. And when does, your, when does your debate group um, start? It is starting. Well, let's just, let me check my calendar. So it's we're in it's June nineteenth, right? So it's starting in a week and a half, I think. So oh, okay. So it's starting on the you know uh, starting on the eighth. So it's like three and a half weeks. Okay. Uh, cool, cool. So we were just starting to look at this article here. Um, and they are doing something that is very similar to our work. Um, so, and they're in Sydney. And I thought you might want to look them up. Yeah, uh, um, absolutely. Thank yes. you. Have you been reading through it as I've been? Am, am I sharing it? Yeah, now? I am. Yeah. yeah. So, tell us what you're seeing there. What are they doing? <laughs> wow. Is it over? Is so, this the article over here? Is it the AI assistance thing on the table? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you can go there Paul, yourself. Paul is, it, Paul, is this the one that's been uh, a, a custom chat bot that has been created by a bunch of uh, researcher and graduate students? Uh, in, I think I've I, seen I, this. I haven't while. seen it anywhere before, but I'm not sure. Yeah. There's a, I'll have to check. There's a guy I've met on the, um, he's an Australian as well. I, you know, mm -hmm. I may I should put you in touch with him, Shane. He's a really great. Oh yeah. Yeah, let me look him up. I'll find his. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'll get his contact information and I'll get it to you. He's a, a little bit of background. He's um. He was formerly with Corwin Press, and he's very fluent mm -hmm. on AI, and he's an instructional coach working across some of the districts of the regions that you guys work in. And um, cool. I think you would find a a a. a, a What's the word I'm looking for? A peer in your questions and your yeah. comments. Yeah, very good. Very like a good, good critical um, peer yeah. on that front. Yeah. Yeah, I'll find. I'll I'll look that up and get it to you. Yeah. yeah awesome. So thank you. It's all about quickly creating AI agents, and then that, those agents, you can chat with them um, and use them to give feedback. I think they're science oriented. We're looking at science, giving feedback on science projects. Um, anyway, worth looking at. Yeah, um, absolutely. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just I like the part that it said here when co piloted by a marker, our cognitive feedbacks agents helped us provide timely, constructive, and supportive feedback. Um, so I thought that was interesting there that, um, that having the marker sort of using the tool, but, um, which I suppose is a, is a difference to um, writing partners where it's more in the hands of the um, 
uh, of the student. So I think that's an interesting sort of differentiator between the two there, that this is more targeted at assisting the marker to provide the feedback rather than on the student to control or iteratively improve them themselves through the feedback cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I could, what I could do from here is I could show a few things. Should I do that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. And well, let, let, let me just uh, let me just talk through some things, and then and then you will tell me. Am I showing writing writing your future right now? Yep, you got your writing partners up. Yep. Okay, so Paul, one of the things you could give us feedback on is if you let me ask you this: Do you help those seniors when they come to you work on their college admissions essays? Uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I have like very busy seasons in the fall and right about january <laughs> so and mostly in october and january are my two busy seasons for for doing so how are they busy what do you do well really what they're having difficulty doing is answering the prompt and number one number one answering the prompt um, number two understanding that an essay and a response are two uh, completely different animals when it comes to composition. And mostly what I read in first draft looks like a response to a question, not an exploration of one's thinking from the beginning of the consideration of the prompt to really understanding what a prompt is asking and then delivering on what is being asked. Uh, that, that's what I'm finding with my seniors is that they really haven't been taught um, the the components right so again uh i don't want to derail the conversation but we, we go all the way back yeah, to, sure. and we go we, we go all the way back to the classic elements of oration right exordium narratio confirmation refutatio parade you know they they don't know those pieces if what they know is hamburger model so they they don't understand that a response and an essay are two different things and the admission officer is asking they, they want they they want to see your thinking, not a necessarily a polished piece of writing that was getting ready to go to the coffee shop, let alone the New York Times. You know, they they want they want they want to see you thinking. They want to see you responding. Uh, but I'm okay. excited about this. Is this now comment? And so comment? yes. Is so this? here's 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 the pitch and what, what we want to think about. You can join. You, you can you can go ahead and join writing partners at some point, and then okay. when you do pull into this group if it makes sense. We are yeah, yeah. currently we are currently in the middle of middle of of a um, two week summer camp that's being done at Arizona State University. Um, Kylie is the teacher um, and she is using Jess Early's um, chapter four, which is all linked here on this page. Um, to with some I have we've to go. Done sorry, before. sorry, everyone. I've, I've okay. got to go grab my class. So, that, okay. thank, thank you, right. and thanks, thanks for that as well, David. Nice to meet you, Paul. Yep. Hey, nice Shane, you. before you, if Shane, before you jump, go to your chat before you jump and drag, copy that file. That's another thing, Gilbert. Yeah. Did. Pull that down. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Check him out. Go. I hope you can Cheers. find him. I'll, I'll try to. Uh, I'll yeah, try yeah. To I'll, I will, I will definitely follow that up. Thank you. You bet. Right, that right, awesome. Good, good to see you, Shane. Yeah, good, good to see you. Sorry, it was only brief, but at least next week's holiday, so I'll be able to actually be on the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the the teachers who are doing this are going to come with are going to come on next week. So that'll be fun. Oh, sweet. Uh, That's yeah, great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. So, and Aditya. I'm showing yes. this to you because this is, you know, as we develop these different groups, um, they, we learn different things and we kind of design stuff and people make suggestions. This one is the most updated and I'd love for the debate one to start to look like this. And so that's worth thinking about a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so let me, some, so, so and David, one of the um, one of the uh, ongoing conversations that we've had 
has to do with how a chatbot works and how what we're doing with writing partners works. And I had this notion, and I'm just going to throw it out at you. <laughs> um, oh, you saw me say that I, I sent a note to Bob Montgomery about it. Yes. But that, that if we can imagine that this is a chatbot, like the groups are chatbots, and then what, what each of the writing partners are, are nodes in the process, right? And you're trained by right? um, design is another level of all of this. But, um, and you might recognize these categories that they're not exactly, sure. I don't know, but yeah. So, so what, we, what we've done is we, we have, and, and Paul Hankins, I apologize, I'm throwing you in the middle of everything. But, um, but we have thinking partners that help students in the brainstorming stage, in the composing stage, while revising and then editing, right? Um, and other language could work there. Um, do you see this pop-up that came up? Uh, nobody's saying yes. So do you see a pop-up or not? Uh, I was just going on um, writing on um, writing part. Okay. So, uh, what okay. am I? So, there's a pop up that's supposed to be on your screen for. Yeah, I guess it doesn't show. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be showing in the screen. Okay, here. okay, we got it. We got it. So, so here's the deal. So, um, we quickly introduced this. I, I went to their class today. There are 10 students, nine students actually, um, who are, will be working through this. They've done some brainstorming about what they want to write for the college admissions essay. Um, the getting started simulator grabs a couple of comments or a couple of things and shows them how they might write the essay and then says, hey, you tried this yourself. And then this lead tutor, description tutor, so what tutor and um, conclusion tutor are different sections of the essay, hopefully getting at what you, some of what you were saying, Paul. Um, but and it it's following Jess Early's notions of of how to help kids through um, showing their thinking. And in the say back, the first four here are um, sort of uh, Peter Albo's notions of how you might respond. So those are going to be kind of waiting for them, and then the the editing one, and then these others as well. The imagined audience. Um, it's amazing how fast time disappears, but we had imagined that we were going to create imaginary um, college admissions officers and that they would be able to give feedback to the students. We're not sure we're going to get to that, but we're working toward that. Um, yeah, so I want to first ask if this kind of organization is uh, helping clarify. Does it make some sense. I think so, it definitely yeah. makes intuitive sense where at each of the different stages, there's different thinking partners associated with each stage. I think that does make on a surface level intuitive sense. Uh -huh. So Paul, can I ask a question? It's going to sound sure, really yeah. old. So are these different links in brainstorming, composing, revising, and editing? Are these scripted interactions that you have built into a large language model like so you are guiding the students and the students to ask to get to a set point with a piece of writing how, how are these being yeah. powered how are they yeah so, so should we show you an example let's do maybe that. maybe <laughs> um is kind of like i've seen this mr hankins okay but okay oh boy okay. I, I appreciate i appreciate you thank you Thank you, young man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, um, so I think the way I was, while, while Mr. Allison opens it up. Um, yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, we, and we, we were even talking about this earlier about how other tools like, um, what was it? Uh, Play, what was it called? I keep forgetting the name we were looking Play at. Play Lab, yeah. Play, Play Lab. Labs, and, and, and I think school, even school the AI does a similar, yep. Mm -hmm. Play Lab, and I think even how Cog Cognity is functioning in this article. It's more where the chat bot is kind of holding your hand, telling you like, okay, uh, put this in and I'll tell you this. Over yeah. here, it's, you just give it your text and then give it a small prompt. 
and then it just spits out a response. There's also that hand holding, so to speak, if you want to think of it like this, where it's not like a guided set of prompts. Um, whereas um, it's more uh, putting in a question and uh, getting your response out from that. Hmm. So, so here's a really here's a a very fresh example. Let's put it that way. So, this student was asked to make a list of ten. They made two, right? Um, but that's okay, right? So here's here's what the this is a getting started example. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go here to the general comments, um, and I'm going to select the getting started simulator. Now, there's the students only they only have not only but they have thirteen. So they can find it pretty fast, the getting started simulator. And then I just say, what do you think? So Paul, while you're typing that in, uh -huh. you know, AI is kind of like this, this friend you've never met before, but you're excited about maybe meeting them. And they <laughs> drop on the table, hey, you can ask me anything. I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. And your initial reaction may be, I, you know, I, I know how to ask questions, but I don't know what to ask you. I don't know how to start asking you questions. And, I'm, and maybe sometimes I'm even a little bit uh, intimidated by what a question yeah. I might ask may trigger by response. Yep, yep. So it sounds like, it yeah. sounds, so this, isn't this what we call, there's a, there's a new phrase out there called uh, using kind of like a restraint. Uh, with AI, put a little bit of a restraint on it so that the students can kind of like bowl with the gutter guards up. Yeah, yeah, might be like that. Well, I, and this is Aditya and David. This is kind of new. What what I've kind of been able to figure out is how to do this on the right side here. So mm. it quickly gives a sense. So let's look at it. I, I jump fast, but once you bring oh. up your once you bring up your thinking partner. You get this, I'll, I'll just read it to you, this. And whether or not to treat the writing partner as a person, or we're going to say play with it, do that. Um, so we're saying I'm, I'm a seasoned writer and expertise in crafting compel, um, compelling college admissions essays, um, bringing a unique blend of empathy and strategic insight in every piece. My mission is help you start telling your story by guiding you through the piece, right? Um, I use imagine think aloud techniques to walk you through brainstorming. And I provided detailed step-by-step -step guides. The idea is that you'd be able to look over here and decide what you want to choose, why you want to choose this thinking partner. Design-wise here, and I'm jumping pretty fast, but I'm going to... Paul, if, if I can... Yes, yes, please. So you're yeah. trying to you're trying to surface. You're, you're using more screen real estate to make the frameworks underneath these thinking partners more transparent. And that's uh, the goal. Yes, and that's goal. that's great. And and what happens when you click for more detail? Do you go to the so when you go for more project? detail, you you get to see the actual the actual prompt, and then and you this, see who made it, and you see where it's shared. Right. Could you could you could I say, OK, I like it that much, but I want to make it I want to make it mine. So could I remix it and make it mine and start loading it into my my own collection of thinking partners? Currently, you do have to go back to find it under make writing partners and then remix it there. Yes. Um, I think and one thing that it. could yeah. be interesting to explore for the future is also mm -hmm. adding in that additional click here, like in the click here for more information thing. Uh, I think it would be useful potentially to add um, the temperature and um, other mm -hmm. things, maybe like in an advanced menu for people to, who want to, who are interested in that stuff to oh, see. So they something. would be able to do it here. Wow. Yeah. Like, like click here for more details and then it shows you the temperature and. Um, oh, you would want that on that page too. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. maybe like a small pop-up box of additional advanced information or something like that. That's and possible. Then you could see all that. You could remix the bot 
as Mr. Cole was saying. And then, you know, I think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think Paul, what this is trend, what this is trending towards, is reducing the number of clicks between understanding the framework that's being presented by essentially you, because you're you're writing these or the teacher, hmm. and then reducing clicks and friction between doing what Aditya is saying and saying, oh, I want to change it to do a certain thing for me and have that all happen. I know this is this is terrible practice to be just designing on the fly, but this no, is a really nice. That's this how we've a, gotten here. So, yeah, this is a very nice feature. It's, it's like two steps away from actually being um, really close to creating really quickly, creating your own thinking partner and making it very, very custom for what you need. And I'll show you how we, the um, just coming back to Paul Hankins, the the um, guardrails you were mentioning. Let's just I don't know if I want to call them that, but the sort of guides that we are designing are realizing it's we kind of back into this and we look at everybody else's descriptions of it, but we're thinking about a a writing partner has a persona, it has a purpose in life. <laughs> it has a process that it goes through. In this case, imagine think allows it's using, which you know is still pretty vague, but you'll see how it works in a second. And then what what the actual thing is that it gives you is identified. And we can we can keep simplifying developing that whole thing, but I'm thinking if we have that as a guideline that's helpful. So I'm gonna hit continue while I'm doing that, Paul, I'll say. You could also put in this box here, hey, I live in Indiana and whatever. You could you could say other things that would guide. Would guide. Here's what it comes up with. Um, Paul, does the, the does the writing partner keep a log of the interaction with the students at the end? So yes, well, uh, in a sense. So here's here's what comes back. So what just happened was tennis, and I learned the value of hard work. And the prompt that we've developed, right, goes to the AI and it spits back this to the student, right? It says, hey, great list. Let's start diving into these topics. And a teacher or somebody would have to explain what's going on here. But here's what's happened, right? My first think aloud, right, tennis. As I begin to write my college admissions essay on tennis, the first question that comes to mind is, how has tennis shaped who I am today, right? So it gives you sort of a list of questions that a writer might be asking as they're writing. It doesn't give you the text. It kind of gives you the ideas of, of what you're thinking. Does it make some sense? Um, it actually kind of is giving too much at this point, a new model, but at any rate, it gives the whole, it does the whole writing. I thought it was only give the beginning. But hey, we'll see what they come up with. And then it does a think aloud on doing hard things. And then at the end it says, okay, now it's your turn. This is how I would get started with these topics. Now you go and try it yourself. Here's the log, you, you hit start a conversation and this all stays here next to your work, right? And then you can go to add document and start writing. Is that does that show a little bit about how this is working, Paul? And others. So, so yeah. Paul, what would I do to get? So, a lot of people are moving toward the like. I, so, if you're going to use the AI, we have talked about that. You are leveraging a tool to assist you in your writing, but we'd like to see the artifact of what is coming from where. So, how do I get that uh, that right sidebar interaction that you just showed me? you just copy and paste that over to a document as an attachment? Are we are we past the days of three page essays with a staple in the upper left hand corner? Now we include yeah the log. Yeah. What are you right? looking for? The, the now? Yeah. I I mean I'm looking the over on the, the, the right. So here's the thing the teacher sees this, other peers see this as well. They can see oh, I would see, anybody can I see I would see that I, yeah 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 which is another distinction that I want to hold on to, by the way. And, and you know, I always want to say we just got here because we, you know, it's not necessarily where, anyway, where we, we didn't plan to be here, but here's where, here's where we're at. The, 
the nice thing about this is that Pierre can see it. It's it's a social interaction with AI, right? Yeah. Um, peers can see it. Teachers can see it. Anybody you've you shared this documents can see. It. Um, Paul, Paul Brene yeah. Brown talks a lot about uh, rumbling through vulnerability. Can I ask you a question? I've known you for a great Please many ask, years. Yes. <laughs> are are you frightened that AI has brought you here this quickly? Because usually you like to take a lot of time and really oh. think through methodology, pedagogy. Is, is I think that, we're is thinking that, it through. I think we're thinking it through as we go. I'm 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 okay with it. You know okay. what I find, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. In relation to that question, I mean, that's a really good mm -hmm. question because I think the I think so much of this AI stuff is about people using it to make worksheets or generate lesson plans. And there's a kind of efficiency that's being pushed at teachers and a time saving device. Um, I'm not I'm not in the classroom anymore. It's been a long time since I have been. Paul is, is I don't want to speak for you, Paul, but I think just the opposite is unfolding in relation to your question that all the pedagogical design practice and the criteria that you're raising are at the front of um, are front of, are at the front, top of mind in this design process. Yeah, that so, would be a good answer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's the case. Um, so yeah. it's kind of the opposite of designing worksheets. It's designing practice and engagement strategies. And it does presume a certain level of facility and curiosity that's not unique. Mm -hmm. uh, that is unique. Um, but no, it's it's the opposite of sort of you know rote early adoption. And sure. I'll I'll speak to that with working with these students in Arizona um, today. They're for you know they don't know me. They don't they barely know Kylie who's teaching them the, for a few days, um, and so. They're coming to AI with their own prejudices, their own experiences, their own hopes, dreams, whatever. Um, <laughs> and they think AI is about getting it right, right? And mm -hmm. and getting... Um, so when they see the one, like they wanted to try the outlining one right away, they wanted to try the correcting my grammar and spelling one right away. But I was saying to them, I did actually say this, we're trying to use AI to make your life harder. <laughs> But what I mean by that is to make you think more, to make you like go in a different direction, not necessarily, right? So, just to give an, the other exa another example here, the lead tutor, um, again, totally based on Jessica Early's research into um, what are good leads, and then developing workshops around that. Um, this one, this lead tutor, it reads the whole thing and then it said, okay, hey, looks like you have two good things going on here. If you can see this in the first paragraph. Now let's think about what else you could do. And here are some examples. These examples again come from Jess. You could start with a quote. You could start with a question. You could start with questions. You could start with, um, oh, an anecdote, right? So it gives three suggestions. Um, that's what it does. Let me show the, um, ask a, uh, this is lead tutor, right? Lead tutor. Just show, here's what the persona says, right? I'm a supportive, uh, I, I'll emphasize your strengths. My mission is to improve your lead by focusing on your strengths. I assess your lead by highlighting two strengths, look for one, and then I provide two Paragraph feedback. One, two, three, three. Sorry. So, <laughs> ending with the creative suggestions for further exploration. My feedback is tailored to your specific needs. So, yeah. So that, that's what we're trying to do here, right? If, if the next time, and and the idea of this camp is that they would go away with um, maybe three beginning essays. Um, so. Then they could come back here and say, oh, I need to work on my lead. Let me see what AI has to say. All right, questions, thoughts? Uh, mm -hmm. Where? Yeah. I know, and I keep bringing this up, um, Go but for I keep it, looking man. at all these different thinking partners and things. Uh, mm -hmm. And that is that I notice a lot of your the thinking partners tend to like 
give alternatives to speech that is like to text that's already there or come up with potential like the one where it kind of comes up with a potential starter uh-huh. and the thing is that if you just copy and like I've, I've shown i've said many times that if you just copy and paste like examples that ai gives you of places to start into your essay then you end up with the piece that it's very obvious what parts were to you and what parts were not. Yep. Or at least that there are two different parts because remember someone who's reading this, like a someone who's close to you, like a family or a friend who, who knows you on a personal level, they're obviously gonna be able to tell, okay, well, this part is very much AI. This part is very much not AI. But then let's take, for example, the partner. Yeah, I'll look, I'll look for the, uh-huh, go ahead. You're gonna give them two different uh, they're going to give them essentially like they're going to be able to tell there's two different like sections to this and the two of them and then keep in mind these people they are just like trying to fill you out a little bit for college essay, uh, for college applications right and right right like they I think it would probably go against what you're trying to do here with the thinking partners if people are just copying and pasting this in so I think the much better way to do this is to just give advice but not something that you can just stick in your essay and then go on. I, I think that would also help encourage deeper thinking about the pieces than if you just give them copy and pastes here. Obviously, like that's what we're trying to encourage. But I feel like giving the example text generally, like if if there's like a few words in the example text that you don't use normally, and uh, and a few like and some ways of phrasing things, even if you're trying to come up with your own way of saying it, you still might tend to go back to those w- words that aren't yours, but are more like whatever AI thought would be a good idea. And even if it would be better, it would still not be you. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's important. No, like, that that's, that's really useful. Um, yeah. I mean, so... Paul, you know, to me, this this is about reflection, what Aditya is uh, suggesting to us right now. The idea that a student could come back post-production, post-production and talk about choices that were made uh, when the tutor suggested something. Why why was that a choice that you adopted? And why was this a choice that you rejected? Uh, At which point did you... uh, did, did you let the, the tutor hold the spoon? And when did you do the stirring? Uh, right. and, I, and I think without that post-production piece, that's what we're missing with, you know, with malicious user intent with the chat GPTs where people are just creating and copying and pasting. That's what Aditya is saying, right, is, is a, uh, in that post-production piece. But we don't do that with college essays. We don't do post-production pieces there. But in the classroom, we do. And maybe in the classroom, we should especially and, in the age of AI. And Dave, David has, at different points, said we need another panel to come up here on the right side where where some of that post-production could be captured kind of immediately. Like you say you say what you did, so it's cap, you know, so we capture it next to it. I think that's some of the design idea. I just want to make sure, Aditya, you're saying this paragraph here, for example, consider using option one. Right. I'd say begin with a thought provoking question and then instead of giving a quote that you could directly just plop into the essay. So you're saying they could just take somebody could just take this quote. Have you ever found passion? Like in, even if you're like, not taking that word for word, like the words like for example, passion or unexpected, if you don't use that that often, it's gonna kind of stick out. Like I can even show you an example if uh, if you guys want of my hundred word of Mr. Ronsky. <laughs> My teacher from, I guess, last year. Wow. You have an example so here? Uh, we did a piece, um, which was 100 words we submitted to the New York Times 100 word essay uh, competition. Are and you going to share your screen and show it? Uh, sure. Next. You have it pulled up? Uh, yeah, I have it pulled up. Okay. So this was the original piece that I ended up Wait, submitting. I got it. I'm going to stop. And then, okay, go ahead. So it was about, like, um, you know, just a friend that I had. Not a particularly great friend. Uh, you can I read remember this essay. I didn't know you then. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend, 
emphasis mm-hmm. on had. I thought we were inseparable. I wasn't shy about it. I'm not like that. Then one day everything changed. It started like any of every other. Then someone tried to stress my friendship. Are you friends with him? You know he doesn't think that. I, of course, said we are. He would never. Then something changed. He said he wasn't my friend. That stabbed me. While a real wound will heal, an emotional wound won't. I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. But I realized he was wrong. I gave him everything. He gave me nothing. It was about like a friend I had in sixth grade. I have, um, aside from this pizza, I haven't really thought about it much, actually. I wonder what he's doing right now. <laughs> but this is, then the AI gave some feedback, like, consider revising this too. Then one day the ordinary fat was shattered and it gave me a bunch more like this. And then I ended up trying to add that in. Uh, this is the revised version. I had a friend, emphasis on had. I thought we were inseparable. I wasn't shy about it. I'm not like that. And then that 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 first part was me. Then one day stood out amongst the ordinary. Then someone tried to annihilate my friendship. <laughs> are you friends with him? You know he doesn't think that. I of course said we are. He would never. Then something changed. He declared my cherished friendship void. That pierced my heart. <laughs> While a real wound will heal, an emotional wound won't. I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. I realized he was wrong. I gave him everything. He gave me nothing. So you can kind of see over here, like, um, where where I had the AI, a lot of the AI feedback versus where I didn't. At least I felt like it was sticking out at, at like a proverbial sore thumb. <laughs> um, so you lost your voice a little bit to the AI. Yeah. But by and, the way, in that in that process that you just showed us there, you have done the reflective work, by the way. Yeah, but, I think. Uh, like, Say what you're going to say. I wasn't really thinking about my voice as much, and I felt like the, it was actually making my writing better. But then I came back to it months later when we had to like start prepping for in March. We went to Drew and stuff, and I realized that that wasn't that. Then then I realized like how how much that kind of took away from my piece, in the sense that it made it not me. Mm-hmm. So Aditya, this is a, an amazing story because. It's a story of somebody who's using AI to support his writing, but also realizing where the, you know, where it's helping and where it's not helping. And so it's complex and interesting. It's, you know what I'm saying? So it's. Yeah. Um, um, can I, sorry, go ahead. What did you want to say? And I, um, I want to push forward on something. This was, I, I definitely think that reflecting, going back to reflect is probably going to be something that's important as we start to move forward. Like, I think we are developing like at a relatively rapid pace for a new technology. So at some point we got to, you know, see how far we've gone, you know, look back, so to speak, what works, what doesn't, and to help us move forward. Okay. I, I, I'm curious about, I, I just want to kind of, there's such rich stuff going on. And thank you, Aditi, for adding all this in. I want to okay. show the tool a little bit and, and have you think with me about, OK, I want to be real here. This is the lead tutor. Um, it's something we made last summer and just duplicated it here. But I'm going to duplicate it, right? And I want to find where it says give examples and see what you think we should say it, do, it does instead. You with me? <laughs> yep. Uh, so what we're doing is we're, we're revising this prompt. And when you when you have something like that where you say, oh, I wish it didn't do that, there's another point I want to make very, very fast. Um, there was a sim when I went out to your school and there was a similar case where Sarah had um, a sentence and then the example and then the AI revised each sentence. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. We turned to Sarah and said, "Hey, Sarah, isn't isn't that taking away your voice if you just could copy those AI sentences into your own?" And she said, "Why would I ever do it? It's not my voice, right?" Um, yeah. So a student who is at that point of valuing their voice and and caring about the project they're working on. 
is going to use AI in a very different way than somebody who's not. But you pointed out we're using this with those students in Arizona who don't know AI that much, and we don't know how they feel about their voice, right? So how could we redo this is the question. Hmm. I think structuring the feedback slightly differently. So instead of here's like the sentence, here's how you can improve it. Um, like here's an, an uh, here's a slightly more improved version with more fancy vocabulary. Like that's yeah. like uh, that's not really that kind of feedback isn't really helpful because it's like your original piece. Look in that case, there was like that's that language while slightly being like more sophisticated is not used. So I really don't feel like that kind of feedback helps. But like it I also it. depends on. So kind of let's back in that original piece where it was. I can. Let's uh, look at this prompt here, though. Look here. What? I'm not. So uh, which prompt? So it's the one of the. Am uh, I sharing? I'm sharing screen. Yes. Okay. Oh, no. I'm, I'm not seeing your screen, Paul. Maybe it's me. Yeah, oh. I think I think when I stopped it, I kicked you off screen share. No, it was. Uh, sorry, thanks. So this is worth doing. I, I thought. Oh, sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Which one is it? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm sharing. Yes. Okay. So this is how this is constructed. I'm going to skip through some of this. Um, but uh, this paragraph here, right here, start your assessment of my lead by listing for me two strengths of my writing, then point to an area that might be improved. That's all cool. Quote from my lead to explain why you, the strengths you see. But then here, give examples of the things that you think could be improved. Um, show your thinking at each step. Um, would If we take that sentence out, do you think that would work? I'm just kind of like trying to still process what this partner exactly does. So what's its purpose yeah. again to... Uh... It's the lead of, of your... That's fair. So option one is adding questions. Option two is come up with a compelling anecdote. Option three is come up with a powerful quote. The idea is I'm going to give you two two really positive things you're doing already in your the beginning of your essay, and I'm going to give you one to really think about, and then you're going to consider these three options. But within all that, it's giving examples, right? I think in this case, uh, like, for example, for the questions in dialogue, uh, just mm -hmm. like saying ask a question about blank here would be enough because then it gives makes students think about formulating the question. For, like, number two, a compelling anecdote, you could try to, like, prompt them, like, uh, try to think of a time when X, Y, Z happened to you and how you can relate it to X, Y, Z. Because this is, this is for the college essays, right? Or is this going to be in a different... No, yeah, group? yeah, it is. So... I think that would be good in that case. Notice like, by I the way, I'll just say anything. But notice, I think notice that would be. Aditya, I don't want to. I just want to point out that we actually already did say avoid giving examples of what I could write. <laughs> so it didn't do that very well. Um, yeah, I, did, I think it, I think it's like something it happens where if you have two conflicting things, sometimes it follows one thing, whereas sometimes it follows the other. Yeah, up here we say um, give examples, and down below we say. Don't give examples. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I, it's going to give examples, sometimes it's not going to. Like, I think I had that debate research partner where originally it was provide a response under 150 words. And then in one section, I don't know if there's any others where it was present. I haven't looked back through that prompt. But I changed it from provide under 150 words to provide over 150 words. But sometimes it still provides 100 under 150 words. So I'm just wondering if there's, if there's still some element of that hidden in somewhere. Or it's yeah. somewhere, and that kind of leads to it producing a different type of response than I want to. I wonder right. what would happen if we change both to be the same kind of language. Good idea. Um, we well, don't. We don't have time to do actually do that. I will work on that and think about what else is here that's making it do that, and then test it. Over, you know, that's. 
I just want to, I just wanted to go through the whole sort of process of never really being satisfied with whatever the writing partner is doing. And your suggestion is really on target. And so, but I think, but what I wanted to show Paul here is, is, and all of us is, is this notion of that we can take our dissatisfaction with, with what the AI is doing and try to fix it. Right. Um, mm. And anybody can kind of do that. So I was going to say, Aditya, you fix it, but it's okay. We'll fix it. <laughs> we'll fix it together. Um, no, it's a really good point. Um, and, and I just want to emphasize again, I think it's contextual because there are some teachers who are saying, hey, AI can give examples and then that makes kids think. I think that's possible, right? It just depends on how it's working out. But I, I really like how Adidia has centered and framed how important that reflection, that interaction and reflection is part of intentional in moving toward product and then post product, right? But at the beginning of this conversation when we were in Cuomo space, I noticed that you had a graphic of that book, Learning in Abundance, right? Uh, yep, yep. Community, community is the curriculum. And... Um, you know, my idea here from what I've seen tonight, and I, I, I'm, I'm in the water, I'm paddling like, like Matt <laughs> underneath the waves. I really appreciate your perspective. Go for it. Yeah. So I, I wonder in that learning and, you know, that learning in a time of abundance model. So what Adidia saw was three suggestions, but that's what he saw on his desktop as he was working. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you 15 other, other, 15 other students in the room also got some of the same suggestions, but also got different ones. How do we pull those out of the abundance basket and put them up on the wall or put them up on the surface so that we can start to capture uh, the abundance, but also be able to put it in a basket? So here's what AI is telling us are ways that we might create introductions or leads to essays that we don't have to ask that next time. We can work on body. You know, what, once we can capture this, so Adidia has like, you know, he has, he has three, but the room has 40. <laughs> I don't know how many it'll generate, but the well, more- Well, no, but just to be clear though, the AI does generate different examples based on different text, right? So, right, right. Yeah. But I think being able to capture that in community in the room, so it's not just one student one-to-one -one getting those three examples, we post them up on the wall real quick and say, hey, what suggestions do we have? Because there's a way of teaching that in the room that we used to do here are five traditional ways of starting an essay. And even that was kind of limited. But AI has shown us the abundance and the affordances. Let's let's capture some of those. You know, sometimes you might do this, sometimes you might do that. Every time AI, I guess what you're trying to say is every time AI comes up with a new or innovative idea, it shouldn't just be one person that's seeing that. If there's something particularly, if there's a bunch of really good ideas, maybe we can capture some of those and then store them so that everybody can use them, not just the one person who got, who was lucky and got that feedback from their specific text, even mm. if it could be applicable to more people. Okay, let's see what's in the lobster pots today that AI brought to us, right? You know, some of these, some of this might be good. You know, some of this may not be so good, but uh, I'm really excited. So Paul, next week, so, yeah, that yeah. your teachers behind writing partners are gonna present next week? Or the, the ones behind this, uh, this particular, um, the the college admissions essay, yeah, they're going to be. Um, Jess, it's Jess and Kylie. <laughs> they're going to be here talking about how their students have been using writing partners this summer. You've created you've created something so, really cool, and so yeah. I, Paul, and I want to say that you and your suggestions here at the end totally make me feel like. AI will be okay when it's in the hands of Paul Hankins, right? <laughs> um, and when it's not, it worries me. So it's not AI. It's like who's managing it. And veteran, thoughtful, experienced teachers need to get busy with AI so that, <laughs> you know, so that they're the ones making it, making it rich and powerful for kids. <laughs> 
And we got to listen to Aditya's of the world because. Oh hey, my goodness. Yeah. yeah the if wisdom, I, the wisdom if I had him as a rising ninth grader, I'd, I'd be following <laughs> him around for the next three years. Uh, he'd be like my protege. <laughs> so Aditya, if you want to get together sometime and work on the um, debate group, we can do that. Let me know a good time. Uh, okay. I am mostly right. until the debate camp. I am fairly free uh, on the weekdays. Okay. Uh, I was talking. I, I have something interesting to share with you related to debate. Sure. Okay. Just, I was talking with um, one of the current people on the debate team, and they said something interesting about how AI is generally viewed over there. Like, I think that, over there means the high school. Yeah, the high school, not okay. like in specifically on the debate team, where basically you have to cut. It, like, it's like card cutting is a technique that you use when prepping for debate, where you have to literally go word for word from a website. So you're allowed to like use AI to brainstorm ideas, but you can't quote directly from AI. So like, I think I'd have to significantly cut back the amount that I'd be using AI in certain areas. Like I like the, the whole research partner thing, probably wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, the whole thing about um, like and then the the checking of the facts and statistics, probably wouldn't need to do that either. But I think where it's going to be really powerful is I'm going to be looking at rebuttals for that. I think that might be an area where it might potentially expand on cool um yeah that from what you just said there i'm not sure but the question coming from your own experience could be like how can i use ai to enhance to you know make me think even more right would be yeah 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 okay Cool. Thank you for being here and for making this happen, folks. And yeah, it's sort of like a prequel for next week. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Right. Have a good night. David, um, I uh, still want some uh, advice about what, what to do out in... Uh... Oh, yeah. Do you want to hang on here and we can do that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys sure. can listen if you want to. <laughs> yeah, Let me cool. stop recording. Though. Yeah. <laughs>